What a wonderful, awesome worship service. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Don't you appreciate the Lord? You know, there is, I love worship. I just think uh, worship is the, the literal Greek word proskuneo means to be like a dog. Dogs want to be with you. <laughs> I want to be with him. Hallelujah. I want to follow him around. Thank you, Lord. I've always said God is not looking for worship. If he was looking for worship, he could go buy a good CD. He's looking for worshipers. Hallelujah. Amen. Interesting about worship. We, we start out with thanksgiving, which is the outer court. Then we get a little higher into praise, which is the inner court. And then we get into the holy of holies, which is singing in the spirit and hearing God. It's like going to the airport. You go to the airport, the first thing you do is thanksgiving. You check your bags. Thank you. Then you get on the plane, and you hear the engines, praise, and then you get on that runway, and that pilot pulls that throttle back, and you're getting airborne. Awesome. A lot of times we hear the engines, but we haven't gone anywhere yet, but God wants us to get airborne. We don't just come to church to rev our engines. We want to get airborne. We want to get up here where we hear what God is saying. I feel so honored to be a part of you, I, uh, all of you, and John, Pastor John, and I, uh, since we've been here, uh, there, he, he had a real prophetic word about this, God, this church, the body here, is turning a corner. And uh, just a lot of prophetic things happen. I've had dreams since I've been here. I've had all kinds of neat experiences, but uh, the Holy Spirit is doing some fresh things, some awesome things. I just sense right now God's getting ready to solve a whole lot of problems where you're concerned as a church. I just feel that. He's just getting ready to make a whole bunch of solutions. He's going to do some, well, John had a dream about God's going to do some things concerning musicians here. Just supply, supply, supply. And, uh, but I just feel that in my spirit. They're, they're just, God's just going to solve a lot of things. Wow. You know why women don't play football. Because there's no way 11 men, women are going to go out in public all wearing the same thing. Uh, so, um, it's kind of, no, no, I can't. I'll repent later. Um, beginning of the year, God spoke to me that 2017 would be a year of breakthrough. There would be a year of answered prayers. Prayers that have been prayed a long time will be answered. The good news is there's still two and a half months in 2017. So I, I encourage you to expect, even in Israel, it's, a, it's Israel's year of Jubilee. Their last year of Jubilee was 1967. I wasn't born yet, but it was, it was a, uh, that's 50 years, 50 years. Hmm. So... The Bible talks about the foundation of the apostles and prophets, having built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. I don't understand that totally, but I know, as Pastor Larry said, God's here to impart this weekend. He has established, John and I, just to be affiliated with you, to be in relationship with you, and, you know, we cross-pollinate. Part of me is going home with you. Part of you is going home with me. And so this morning, I just have a brief word here about acknowledging God. It's in Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge your circumstance. No, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. This, this little verse here, two verses, have just changed my life the past couple of years. I believe this is probably one of the most important messages I, I think I've received from the Lord. But notice it doesn't say, trust in the Lord with all your brain. Because that's where most of us are. We limit God by our thinking. God's not against the mind, he's against the carnal mind. He's against the analytical mind that try to figure it out. I always say God, about God, God is not figured out, he's revealed. So when you pray, don't pray from your brain, pray from your heart. 
Isaiah 55 says his thoughts are higher. It doesn't say they're unattainable. They're just higher than ours, better than ours. Wow. And then another thing it doesn't say, it says, uh, and lean not to your brain. <laughs> lean not to your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your brain. In all your ways, not some of your ways, but in all your ways, acknowledge Him. How many know we're good at acknowledging our circumstances? We acknowledge our problems. But there's a theme through the entire scripture. If you'll acknowledge God in everything, it's amazing what He'll do. Then there's a promise tied to this verse. And it's a, verse we all, a promise we all need. And it said, if you'll trust in the Lord with all your heart, if you'll choose not to lean on your own brain, and you'll choose to acknowledge God in everything, He will direct your paths. Now, who doesn't need direction? And so, there, there's really two ways to acknowledge God. One, when you're in trouble. Most of us don't acknowledge God. We acknowledge the situation. We acknowledge the problem. But the best way to acknowledge when you're in trouble is to just say, God, I don't know what to do here. I don't know. I'm, I don't have the wisdom. Uh, I, I, I don't know where to go, but Lord, I acknowledge you. And then, I think in many cases, as soon as you say that, God will start giving you thoughts. God will start unraveling something. God will he'll open your eyes many times, just in the next minutes of what to do. And I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. But it's, it's kind of interesting how the, you, you know, we, I believe God moves all the times in our life. I believe he moves continually. I believe he answers prayers. But what I believe is most things God does go unacknowledged. That's good. That's good. And so we have to learn to acknowledge God just every time you turn. I don't care if he gives you a parking place. I don't care if he just provides something. I don't care. But there's always these little things God is doing. And I believe God keeps records. Hmm. I believe he keeps record. My wife and I have had such an amazing experience the last several months, but we've, we've just started in the beginning of the day, say, God, we just acknowledge you. And we acknowledge your presence, and Lord, we acknowledge, and we're asking you to direct our steps. We, we put, got this condo, and it was a, it's a real fixer-upper, and it was just real, uh, needed a lot of work. And... I've seen them do it on television. It takes about 45 minutes. And um, the, the, uh, the problem is we, were, we, were, we couldn't even get the right paint. We needed to paint the entire thing. And we sat out in the parking lot of Lowe's and we said, Lord, you've got to help us. You've got to help us. We can't come up with a good paint color. Because paint is deceiving. Because it looks one way on a chart and then you get it on. You think, what happened here? And anyway, so we sat out there and we agreed. And we walk in there and a man comes up and says, may I help you? And it's a miracle to even get waited on, you know. And, and, and we said, well, we need a paint color. And we told him our issue, our problem. We said, we need kind of like this, kind of like that. And he said, it's funny here. He said, I'm, I'm here today. I've I have, I'm in charge over the whole half of the United States here, and I just happened to be in here this morning, and, and he said, I'm the top Valspar rec representative, and we walked out of there 30 minutes later with the best color, and we got more compliments on that color. It's just a perfect shade. My wife is an occupational therapist. She's, she stopped about a year ago, but... She was in there one day, and she's ministering to this woman. This woman's 49 years old. She's extremely depressed. She's had a stroke. She's, she's, she's so depressed, she can hardly stand it. And, and my wife says, let me pray with you. And they prayed for a, just a minute or so. And the next day, my wife walks in the same nursing home, and the woman says, my depression's gone. My pain is gone. I feel so good. I just don't understand what happened. <laughs> and she was serious. I do not understand what happened. And my wife tried, we prayed. She, she, she couldn't relate the prayer and the results. God answered just like they prayed. 
and she couldn't get it. And I think there's a lot of times we mumble something in prayer and God answers and we don't even notice. Wow. And I challenge you to start keeping a record. If you want to get your notebook full, just start down, writing down answered prayers. Because I believe God does them. I mean, when I lived in Birmingham, a couple in the, the church we attended, they were uh, associate pastors, and they'd been married 16 years. No children. Wanted to have children. Married 16 years, no children. So one day, the Lord dealt with us and had us make a phone call to the couple got him a hold of him at church, didn't know him very well at all. And we said, the Lord uh, has given a word to us. You, and got him on the phone, you and your wife are soon going to have a baby. And not only that, it's going to be a girl. I th and I think he dropped the phone. But, but uh, it wasn't just weeks later that we hear the news back. Now, we didn't know him well. We hear the news back. They're pregnant. It seemed like roughly nine months later, they, <laughs> they had this little baby girl with real fat legs, and they, they, they were so overjoyed. And some of my friends went to that couple, and they said, do you remember when you got the phone call that you're going to have a child, and it's going to be a girl? And the guy says, no. He said, I don't remember. I don't remember anything like that. And I thought, that's, I think it, it hurt my feelings. And I think it hurts God's feelings, if, if, if that's the right way to say it, that a lot of times he answers prayer and he said, I beg your pardon. You prayed and I heard you, and that's why things are going better in your marriage. It's not just some kind of coincidence. You asked me and I answered. Wow. Thank you, Lord. I believe that we're to acknowledge God every single time he answers a prayer, and I believe he'll do more. The more we've done it, the more amazing things God does. And uh, I, I just could stand here and just tell you, situation after situation after situation, where God just answers these prayers. We were in Helen, Georgia, traveling through there, never been there before, but my wife and I love to hike because she needs the exercise. And... and uh, so we, it's late at night, we're going, we said, we don't know where to hike, we don't know anything around here, and we're just, we stop in this general store, it was almost closing time, and we're walking around there, and this lady comes up to us, and she says, just looks at us like I've known you all my life, she says, I want to tell you guys where to hike. And she, start, she pulled a map out, and then she said, come out to my car, and she, she draws this whole map, and she writes things down, and we stood there, and we acknowledge God. God, this, this is not a coincidence. I'll just tell you one more. We were in, uh, I driving through Knoxville, Tennessee area last year, last November, and we both like caramel apples. And uh, I just saw, I was craving a caramel apple, and all of a sudden I saw this Russell Stover's, and I don't know, the car just, you know, just kind of turned in there. And there were five dollars and fifty cents a piece or something but they were so good and we we just uh, enjoyed them and we thought God you're good we just these this is good and they're so good for you and uh, you know we just we just enjoyed that so months later we're driving back toward Kansas City and my wife just said you know by the way there's a there's a Russell Stover's about a hundred miles out you know I said hmm and again it was mysterious because the car just you know <laughs> And we pull up in the parking lot, and I'm on the, I'm on the phone with a pastor from Tuscaloosa, kind of an you know, important conversation, and she just says, I'm going on inside. And I'm still on the phone about 15 minutes later, and she comes out of Russell Stover's with a humongous box with 18 caramel apples in it. And I said, have you lost your mind? I said, what in the world? Because I thought, you know, she's not like that. And I, I, I said, what happened? She said, I went in there and I said, you know, walking around, the man, some man says, could I help you? And she said, yeah, I'd like to buy a caramel apple. And he said, well, I've got this whole cart of them here and I'm getting ready to throw them away because we have to throw them away every two days. She said, is there anything wrong with them? No. And she, he said, would you like them? And she said, well, yeah. How many would you like? 
I can take them all. And, and so she walks out there with these free 18 caramel apples, and it took me almost an hour to eat them. And, uh, but the, uh, the, the amazing thing is, and I said, this is God. I, yeah, I know it was God because God got a kick out of it because he knows we like them. He knows they'd kill us, but, but he knows we like them. And we stood there and acknowledged God, and I said, you know, to just show you how much this is God, I dare you to walk into a Russell Stover's and think you're going to get 18 free caramel apples. But things like that have been happening over and over again. The more we just say, God, we acknowledge you. Any little thing, God, we acknowledge you. You did that. And he, he gets so involved in our lives. I was playing golf the other day, and I, hit a, I, I play with yellow balls because I don't want people taking credit for my great shots. And... and uh, <laughs> The thing landed in the mud, and I heard it land. I looked everywhere for it, and I said, Lord, I'd love to find this golf ball. And all of a sudden, I saw this beautiful butterfly. And I thought, man, that's a pretty butterfly. And I, went, and I just went land, and it landed on my golf ball that was buried in the mud. Just a tiny sliver of that golf ball was out, but it landed right on it. God, I acknowledge you. And I'll tell you, it's life-changing. I think God gets offended. Remember when the disciples, and you can look in Mark chapter 8, or I think it's, uh, I'm not sure where in, in Matthew, but it says that the disciples were worrying because Jesus said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, and oh, we didn't bring any bread. And he said, why do you reason? Now, thank you, Lord. I want to acknowledge Eric want to acknowledge Mike. You know, we need to acknowledge one another. Amen. I've made a decision. Every time my wife cooks a meal, I'm going to acknowledge it. And I'm going to say, that was good. Always. And I think it's good. And sometimes I acknowledge by cleaning up the mess, because I'm not a good cook, but, or I, period, I can't cook. Anyway, <laughs> I grew up with four sisters and never learned. So um, anyway, we need to acknowledge one another. Gene, we acknowledge you because you're so faithful. Amen. You're such a blessing. All these years, praise God. <laughs> praise God. We, uh, you know, so many times people go unacknowledged, unappreciated. I think in heaven there's going to be a, a special place for people that did all the cameras and stuff. It'll be a very small room. But, but I, I think, but, but you know what I'm saying, there, there's a need to acknowledge God. We were, and I keep talking about crazy things, but we bought this big piece of furniture and I sent Melody over to get it in it. We have a Honda CRV and it, there was like a quarter of an inch on each side of this big old thing and the people at the store helped her get it in the thing and I called her and she, I, she, I said, where are you at? She says, I'm two miles out. I said, okay, we acknowledge God. There's no way I can lift this. And I felt guilty about putting it on her back and, and everything. <laughs> And, and she pulls up in there in the, in the parking and, and all of the sudden, God is my witness, this great big old man that made John look tiny. And, and he's a big old guy and he walks up just out of the blue. I, I don't know where he came from. He said, sir, did you need help with that? And he grabbed that thing and muscled it and, and he put it up in our house, set it, set it in the room and, and just did it all. And then he said, would there be anything else? I said, no, that about covers it. And then he just, took, he just disappeared. But things like that have been happening since I acknowledged God. Hallelujah. And God wants to do things. And, I, and, and again, I started talking about when they were worried about a, a loaf of bread. We only have one loaf of bread. And Jesus said, hey, guys, why are you worrying about bread? And he said these wonderful words. He said, don't you remember the other day when I stood there in front of 5,000 people with a little dab of bread and fish, and I fed all of them. And not only that, how many large baskets full of fragments were left over? And with tremendous intellect, they said, 12? And then, and then he said, when I, the other, before that, the day there was 7,000, and how many? And, and, they, and they answered again. Why don't you understand? 
And then think about the lepers, 10 lepers who walk away. He says, go show yourself to the priest. And what a sight it must have been as they're walking away. The, the awful, filthy disease just disappears and dissolves off of them. And one comes back to acknowledge him. And he said with a loud voice, he said, thank you. And what did Jesus say? Weren't there 10? Where are the other nine? And I believe a lot of us, including me, are guilty of, of not giving God credit, not giving Him gratitude, not giving Him thanks. Oh, we don't have any problem acknowledging a situation or acknowledging a frustration. But we have trouble acknowledging God. You ever give a graduation gift? You ever send a little check to some high school graduate or college graduate? How many notice most of the time you don't get a thank you? I don't have to have, I don't, I'm not asking for anything, but, but I, I, I just want to be acknowledged. I am a person, I am alive. And you know what it makes me do when that happens? I want to not acknowledge him the next time. And I think God's the same way. If you don't start acknowledging, I'm not going to do it. Because I don't appreciate, you don't even take the credit to send me a text, you know, thank you or, or something. So any, anyway... The whole world, they don't acknowledge the cross. I think Jesus says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever would want to believe on him, he'll give them eternal life. And people go through life without acknowledging the cross. He's not asking to perform anything, he's just saying acknowledge it. What does it say in Romans 10? He says, if you will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, I'll give you eternal life. You know, most people won't go to the trouble. And they come up with these crazy, stupid theories. Well, we're all going to the same place. And God's saying, would you acknowledge my cross? And once you've acknowledged the cross, then acknowledge the Holy Spirit who's working in your life, who's intervening. We don't know how many car accidents he's spared us from. We don't know how many disasters he, he's, he's done, he, he's prevented from for us. And so we can acknowledge the Lord. And I'll make this real quick, but in, in 2 Chronicles 20, Jehoshaphat had three armies come against him. And, and he... He, his first thing he did is he, he, he was in trouble. We're in deep yogurt. We got three armies coming against us. You know, we're all going to die pretty, pretty much. And it says that, uh, it says in Second Chronicles 20, a great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea. Joseph had feared. He set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord. The first thing Jehoshaphat did, and you can read this later, the first thing he did, he reminded God of who he is. He said he stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God of, of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? Do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the earth? And you're, in your hand is there not great power and might so that no one is with able to stand you? The first thing he says, God, I just acknowledge who you are. And then the next thing he did, he reminded God of what he had done. As you, aren't you not our God who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend forever? And, and he gives all the promises. This is what you've done in the past. Then he says, I want to remind you, Lord, of the injustice going on. There are people of Ammon, Moab, Mount Seir, whom you will not let Israel invade. And they came out of the land of Egypt. Here they are rewarding us by coming to throw us out of your possession, which you have given us to inherit. Aren't you going to do something? And then he says these wonderful words. He just, he just acknowledged his helplessness. He said, Lord, we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor we don't, don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. See, we acknowledge circumstances, but we forget to acknowledge the Lord. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. This happened in my health. I don't know what to do. But you don't have to know what to do. All you have to do is acknowledge the Lord. We don't know what to do. And it says, and, and he goes on and on, but 
after he says that, a prophet breaks out in this wonderful, I love the prophetic voice. As I said yesterday, anytime God speaks, he thinks he's right. And he said, listen, all of you in Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you, and you King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed tomorrow. Go down against them. <laughs> What's the Holy Spirit do? He said, don't run, go down against them. You think, man, you're going to get shot first. And it says that, uh, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Go down against them. They will come up by the uh, ascent of Ziz and so forth. You won't need to fight in this battle. Position yourself, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. It's okay to say, God, I don't know what to do. I have no clue what to do. The leader leads. He says, hear me, O Ju Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, y and you will prosper. I love the prophetic word of the Lord, because it's all about God blessing us, increasing us, taking us from a dry place and putting us in a healthy, strong place. When he consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness. And as they went out before the army, they weren't singing a war song. They were singing, praise the Lord and his mercy endures forever. We think we have to sing some kind of war song. No, just sing about the goodness of God. Amen. And the enemy turned on. They all killed each other. They went down there and everybody's dead. It took them three days to collect all the iPads and, and everything. And, and it was amazing. Trust in the Lord with all your... Lean not to your... In all your ways. Not some of your ways. All your ways. Acknowledge Him. He'll direct your paths. And I was talking a minute to Julia and she's saying how God's been dealing with her this scripture and I thought this is the same exact thing but it says that Hannah wanted a child because she had this this other woman kept chiding her I got ten children you don't have any she began to cry out to God she said I want a child so badly and she's in the temple praying and her husband said I'm better to you than ten sons yeah I know but 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 I want to have a child and I'll tell you something if you give me a child, God, I'll give him to you. That little critter will belong to you. And, 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 and she's in the temple praying in 1 Samuel 1, and it says she was in such intense prayer that her mouth was moving, but there's no noise coming out. And the prophet Eli, or the priest, comes in, and he said, Woman, don't drink wine in church. That guy couldn't track an elephant in four feet of snow, I don't think. But, but, but he, he was so insensitive. And she said, no, Lord, no, sir, I'm not drunk. I'm drunk with desire. I want a child. And I've told the Lord, if he'll give me a child, I'm going to give him right back to him. I just want to be the instrument to bring him forth. And God put a word in the old priest's mouth. And he says, okay, go your way. You got a child. He's coming. It says later that she made a, she left him in the temple. She, every year she would make a little robe for him to wear. But those were cute. And, and every year just give him a, this robe. And it says, and most people don't see it, but it says in the last part of that scripture. In, second, in 1 Samuel 2, it says, and it just shows how God has a cruel streak. It says, and the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bore three sons and two daughters. People don't see that. But she said, God, I'm going to acknowledge you. And then God can't stand. He just has to say, I'm going to, I'm going to bless you with five more, which would kill a lot of people. But uh, the, the truth is, my life has changed since I've been acknowledging God. You know, I just saw this this morning, and I'm going to have Pastor John come up. But it says in, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, But know this, 
that in the last days perilous times will come. But notice it didn't say North Korea might attack you. God says perilous times are coming. What are perilous times? He said, well, here's a definition of perilous times. Men will be lovers of themselves. They will be lovers of money. They will be boasters. They will be proud. They will be blasphemers. They will be disobedient to parents. They'll be unthankful. They'll be unholy. They'll be unloving. They'll be unforgiving. They'll be slanders without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God having a form of godliness but denying his power from such people turn away. Those are perilous times when people stop being thankful. I just thought that's amazing. Wow. So we serve a God who loves to be intimately involved in our lives. I don't ever want to be guilty ever again not acknowledging you know, in the Old Covenant, they had, a, they had an ignorance offering. You, got, you, you have a special sacrifice in case you committed a sin and you, didn't, you, you weren't aware of it. And a lot of times we pray over meals and say, Lord, thank you for the meal. Thank you for everything you've done today. And Lord, thank you for all those things you did that I didn't even notice. <laughs> because it's important to acknowledge God. I believe this truth will change your life. And believe me, I'm not using you as a laboratory to see if it works. I've already used it. It's been a laboratory for me. The more I acknowledge God, the more ridiculous things He does. Sometimes they're little things. Sometimes they're just mind-boggling things. Stupid things like finding a golf ball, but other times things that are just off the charts. This brother here in the blue shirt, I see you sowing seed and sowing seed and sowing seed and I just feel all morning the Lord saying you're going to get a return on your harvest and the brother in, next to you in the white shirt it, it's real strange your, your first name is Steve. Steve with that with an S yeah and uh, the but I I see you walking on water it's like you're you're in a time in your life where you're having to step out of the boat and I see God putting substance under your feet. And God's going to reveal the supernatural to you. And he's going to lead you in supernatural ways. I don't know what's coming, but I'm, I feel very excited about it. The Holy Spirit spoke to me, and before Pastor John comes, he spoke to me during worship. There, there's someone here that you've taken on a new job, and you hate it. <laughs> and your boss is here. No. Uh, but uh, the... the but, but, but he spoke to me that he's going to deliver you from it, like taking off a glove, and then you're going to slip on another glove. It's going to be real easy, but you say, I, I, I just hate it. I'm just so unfulfilled. But you just praise God, just exalt God. He's going to provide another one. It's going to happen. I think that is such good news. And so... Um, Janet tomorrow is going in for open heart surgery. I don't. I, I know everybody's praying, but are we just. I, I just saw. I, I want to say to Janet. I hope she's listening online, because I felt like the Lord saying, "You're not going to have to fight in this battle, because I'm going to take care of it." So let's just thank God right now, Lord. We thank you for helping Janet. We thank you to flood her with peace. We thank you to just saturate her. In your peace, your peace. And Lord, just let this be the easiest thing she's ever been through. We thank you for it. We're behind her, we're, you're behind her. And we're in your will. Thank you, Lord. Thinking about precious Julia this morning. And I hear two words. Gaining strength. I heard that from the Lord, Julia. Thank you, Lord. I thank God for Pastor John, and I told him, don't you dare to cut it short, because he's got a word for us that is really good. And I say these, because I, I know he's scared. And, um, <laughs> but this is an important day. Amen. Don't you appreciate the Lord? God is so good to us. Praise God.